When you are in pain, and I'm talking about the kind of pain that takes your breath away, that makes your hair stand up on end and sends shivers down your arms and legs. When you feel that kind of pain, and it's happening all the time, the first thing you do is panic. And then eventually, you give up. Lydia Pippin had given up. Between growing up on a farm, having kids, and then a couple of car accidents, her back hurt so badly that she cried every day in the shower. She cried in the shower because it hurt too much to get out. Until one day, Lydia was introduced to Dr. Ann Fox on Facebook. Dr. Fox is a pain management physician. Lydia knew she had nothing to lose. So she called the office and set up an appointment. Lydia was depressed by her pain. Others handle it in an even more dangerous way. We're living through an unprecedented number of overdose deaths in this country. We don't know exactly how many of those overdoses started out as a person seeking relief from chronic pain, but it's safe to say it's a lot, most. That means finding the right pain management doctor these days is literally a matter of life and death, your life and death. So, okay, then the question becomes, well, who's the best? And there's no scientifically proven method for ranking pain management doctors. I looked at the information that was available. I also interviewed several of my colleagues and ultimately came up with a three-star rating system for pain management doctors. To begin with, training and specialty matter. The best doctor for you is the, has the right training and experience so that they can deal with what's wrong with you. I mean, it may seem obvious, but if you want a doctor to treat your pain, you're looking for a doctor who specializes in pain. While I sometimes see doctors who studied internal medicine, radiology, neurology, and various other ologies, none of them were actually trained specifically for pain management. But there are two types of doctors that are. As a part of her residency training in anesthesia, Dr. Ann Fox learned to assess patients, perform techniques like epidural injections, medial branch block, radiofrequency ablation, and spinal cord stimulation. She was also trained to know when a patient needed to services of some other type of doctor and how to make the necessary referrals. The only program out there with similar training to anesthesiology is actually physical medicine and rehabilitation, which is hard to say. So we often call it by its initials, PM&R. Anesthesiology and PM&R, doctors from those two specialties who wanna subspecialize further in pain management can go on to do a one-year fellowship training and get a certificate in pain management. During that year, they learn block techniques, but also how to diagnose the cause of your pain and when it's nece what's necessary to eliminate it permanently. Ask Lydia Pippin. Dr. Fox is certified in pain management by the American Academy of Anesthesiology. Her certification is listed on the web. That's how Lydia could have known Dr. Fox was qualified before they even met. Well, okay, does having a certificate mean that the individual is necessarily the best? No, but it certainly does make it more likely, right? Specializing in something makes you more likely to be better at it. All this training is important because pain management is not just about the pain. It's about finding and diagnosing the underlying cause. Anita Hunter had neck pain and stiffness literally for decades, but it blew up last year. To help you find the best pain management doctor, I've developed a three-star rating system. Training matters, so I gave a star to doctors who are trained in anesthesia or PM&R. To earn a certificate in this subspecialty requires an extra year of training dedicated to pain management, as well as passing a really difficult test and review by a board. So I awarded a second star to doctors who have certification in pain management. 
And finally, science says that narcotics should not be prescribed routinely for pain unless it's due to cancer or surgery. Some pain management doctors I respect as doctors disagree with me. If you ask me, that is a killer philosophy, but they're certainly entitled to their own opinion. Nevertheless, I awarded a third star to doctors who do not prescribe narcotics for chronic non-cancer or post-operative pain. We all know that the doctor rankings you see online are mostly about the experience people are having with the office, but the office is important. So I therefore finish the list off by ranking pain management doctors with the same number of stars by the average of their vitals, health grades, and other sat patient satisfaction scores available on the internet. For a look at our rankings, check out phoenixspineandjoint.com Pain management changed Lydia's life. It helped Anita Hunter too. So who's the best pain management doctor for you? Well, go to phoenixspineandjoint.com and find out. For a copy of the transcript of this segment, enter your email address and one will be sent to you. For best practice, I'm Dr. Dan Lieberman. If you have a question you would like answered on Best Practice Live, there are three ways to ask. Leave a comment on any of our social channels, click the link to our website and complete the submission form, or call or text us at 608-602-4022. The more information you can give us, the better we can answer your question. So please contact us and we can walk you through uploading your imaging to a secure server. Please like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with information about your spine and joint health. Lastly, be sure to check out new episodes at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, where we answer all your questions.